Hello and welcome to a very special number of Christmas, our podcast dedicated to the merriest of holidays, the festive season with films without Santa, snow, being left home alone. Time of year we all come together and argue about why is turkey a Christmas food? I'm your host, Ashley Hobley, and helping me grow my heart three sizes Christmas cheer is Dylan Black. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest, the most Australian, un Australian thing I think in this movie is the turkey. Like, I, like, I've had turkey at Christmas, but it's definitely never been a the centerpiece. Day. Yeah. It's just like, well, we've got An chicken, option. we've got turkey, we've got ham. You know, like we just got yeah. a whole fucking plather of meat. Take your pick, but never an actual stuffed turkey. turkey. Nah, no. Fake news. All right, today we're talking about a Savage Family Christmas, the Actor Award nominated for Savage Family Christmas. Mm. Uh, so please be aware we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about pop themes in any of the movies. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. It's currently streaming on Binge. With that said, let's jump to discussion of A Savage Family Christmas. I hate Christmas. Oh, come on, it can't be that bad. <gasps> Is this turkey from that crappy corner store, James? Yeah, Hi, James. Hey, mate. Merry fucking Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mummy and Daddy. Ho, ho, ho. Sorry I'm late. What happened to your face? Yeah, what happened to your face? I'm okay. Are you sure you're not Bruno Mars' hotter brother? Three years, hey? So you're now... Davina. I've always been Davina. I wanted to give you a call, but, um, well... How did you lose my number? What? Did you lose your house? Directed by Madeline Dyer. Written by Daniel Mulverhill, Madeline Dyer and Max Jalfa. Starring Darren Gilshin, Helen Thompson... Ryan Morgan, David Roberts, Thea Ravenel, Max Jaffa, Rika, Ryan, Gary Sweet, and Rachel Griffiths. After years of estrangement, transgender woman Davina Savage returns home for Christmas with her new boyfriend. Expecting her transition to be the focus is instead overshadowed by family secrets and lies, which threaten not only their lives, but another Christmas lunch. Dylan is a Savage Family Christmas, a Christmas present, stocking stuffer, or lumber coal. I'm going to go present just. Mm. Just. I don't really think about it because I'll be honest, I feel like this movie at times is a bit of a mess, um, but ultimately and at, at times also rather corny. And like I, I was having such an up-down relationship with it and it ends with a line as like, well, we're family or something like whatever the fucking last line yeah. of the movie is like, we're all stay in touch because we're family. I was like, oh, fucking what? But then I was like, you know what? It is a Christmas movie. Sort <laughs> of like corny dialogue sort of comes with part. And I think ultimately, it, like I didn't know anything about this before I pressed play, to be honest. And it starts, I'm like, oh God, like here we go. We're going to do some fucking like really like sort of, it'll be some corny like, like family dealing with trauma but not really at christmas because it's a christmas movie of a trans story um and i felt like they actually ended up doing like a very good job i guess like it's it's actually a, it covers for a lot you know it wasn't as like wholesome as it was like this you know it is it sort of covered a bit more of the the trauma around that for those characters and um even like i don't know, like it weirdly worked at times and others and i thought the cast was really good so yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna creep it into a present. I'm gonna go slight on the other end of that edge and go stocking stuffer. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, the the messy parts of this movie were just too messy for me to consider it something that I'd want to watch regularly. Um, yeah, like you said, there's really good moments, um, and obviously they they tackle the subject matter in a very respectful way. Um, even though like there is like. I imagine it would be troubling to watch for some people, like because they do so much dead naming and like have photos of um, pre-transition Davina and that kind of stuff um, prominently and regularly. A lot of um, dead naming and stuff. That kind of stuff and like, yeah, like and then the but there is certain moments where it's very heavy-handed and it feels like they're reading from a therapy textbook 
out loud and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting family dynamic of like the, the dad used to be like a big rugby superstar or whatever, I guess is the implication. Um, even though it's not tied to any place in particular. <laughs> um, and the, the two of the children are adopted and one is not. Um, and obviously, the, you know, there's a bunch of different, everybody's got their little bit of trauma. Obviously, the big other issue is the son owes somebody $20,000 uh, oh. and desperately comes here seeking money. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Like, I think they like doled out like the different secrets interestingly over the course of the film um whether it's you know the daughters they have letters from the daughter's mother like who it turns out was trying to extort the parents for money um later but even threatened to like take her home um and uh them obviously being broke and them both not being faithful to each other for very extended periods of time uh, and the son, not being the son, but the uncle's son. <laughs> just, uh, it's interesting because, like, you obviously got vibes that the, the uncle was into Brenda the entire movie. Um, but then the reveal that, you know, it's actually your son. Very amusing. Uh, and obviously all building up to this sequence in, in the house where, like, they shoot the chandelier and then everybody kind of goes to the hospital. <laughs> Very amusing. Um, but yeah, I feel like, it, yeah, interesting family dynamic. I feel like Davina is an interesting character, even though she, you know, kind of heavy handed and kind of, um, very blamey, like, obviously it is hard to like sit in their shoes, I guess, because it just feels like she's blaming all her issues on their parents and that kind of stuff. And like. As the parents dead name her and Yeah, that's that <laughs> that makes it difficult to like yeah. But you know, she's she's not giving them a chance, I guess, at any yeah. point. Like there's a lot of resentment uh, throughout the film. And then it kind of all like dissipates because they all were in a life or death situation, I guess. Uh and they'll finally are able to address their feelings and that kind of stuff. But there's some nice moments. They go outside and play rugby. Uh, which is obviously a thing that connected them for a very long time, even though, you know, uh, she's transitioned to a different goals and cooking loves. now, right? Wasn't that the, yeah, she's a chef and does no yeah. cooking. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I think it's hard because the parents are like shown like to be super, they're not super likable right from the jump. Like, no, let's be, let's be honest. Uncle Dick was the star of this. <laughs> he was. With his snow machine that constantly was shorting out the electricity, and his Santa suit that he lent to somebody else that was giving him hives. I mean, uh, Darren, 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 Darren Glish, Glishen, Garen, where is it? Glishenen? Yeah. Um, plays. I'm pretty sure the same role in everything I've ever seen in, or some variation of it. And I got nearly no problems with it. Yeah, I, I don't have an issue with it either. You know, you do solid job. Um, the only other thing is they appear to have killed the dog and then the dogs just suddenly find the next scene and has eaten. Well, I think the dog just overdosed. It threw up and passed out. No one ever thought to like think about that on, you know. Yes. And it infuriated me because there was a vet right there. (laughs) Nobody thought thought to to go ask the vet. Yeah. I thought that's what was going to happen. Like when, when he picked up the dog, I was like, ah. Here's where the vet part comes into play. Like that's. But I guess there were maybe there were the two people he didn't know that they were a vet. I guess. Well, um, yeah, I guess he wouldn't. Have I don't, he and he, I also question I like, who the fuck's Kane. <laughs> I also question uh, if iron deficiency is a thing in dogs that causes them to eat metal and lick rust. I don't know. I'm, iron deficiency is a thing in people, so maybe. Yeah, but you just suffer through it. You don't go eating metal poles. You know what I mean? No, you usually get, like, tablets you take for iron. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I would say that her feeding the dog uh, her, the the meal that Kane brought was mm. maybe the most fucked up thing in this movie. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Any other thoughts on Savage Family Christmas? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed... Actually, like, so, Max Yoffa? Yoffa? Um, first role for him. 
and uh, yep. co-writer of the film. Co-writer, yeah. Really good, I thought. Like, definitely yeah. the sort of the the sane, the sane, the sane person body in this situation. In this situation, you know. But, you know, could tell he was trying. The, you know, go talk about football. Doesn't just, give a fuck, obviously. No, just trying to, like, <laughs> yep. get through the day. Yep. I like the part where it's like, I'll say grace. I'll say, uh, you know, everything. Whatever. Whatever gets me out of this fucking place soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God, Jesus, yeah. he says, Muhammad. Muhammad. <laughs> Stay anybody? I'm not I'm gonna, done, I'm going to appreciate that. Yeah. I'm going to appreciate uh, that. That's very fun. So, Also, the doctor was quite funny when she, when she gave Rachel Griffiths, yeah. Yeah, Rachel Griffiths just, with the chandelier in head. Yeah. Like, God, yeah, the, this... the other doctor comes over like, hey, is anyone from the What's My Call family? No, this is the chandelier head. Oh. 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 <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> uh, also, Gary Sweet's kids. Very funny. Yeah, that was funny. Did you murder anybody today, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Fun times. Gary Sweet, yeah. There's some decent names in this. Like, decent Australian fun. Names. I also love the, the son. Uh that was a pretty good song at the end. Did you watch Jimmy it all the Jimmy. way? Did you see that? Watch the yes, whole song? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's banger. It was a banger. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas rap. Yeah, Christmas rap coming soon. All right, let's know what you thought of a savage Christmas. A savage, a savage Christmas. Yeah, just a savage yep. Christmas. Just a savage Christmas. Not that hard to say. It's just a savage I mean, Christmas. It's interesting to have interesting to have this juxtaposed with the other Australian Christmas movie we watched. Uh. Family Christmas, no, Jones Family Christmas. Yep. That's why I'm getting mixed up. Um, and how they are eerily similar, uh, in the way that not a lot of Christmas movies are that all these secrets kind of come out when your family's together at the same place. Yep, can't hide anything from family. All right, let's know what you thought by going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to Discord at explosion.com slash Discord if you want to help us out here at a very explosion of a Christmas. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or in Podchester. Leave us five stars. And you can leave five stars or just tell people about the show. And if you've been enjoying this podcast and want to spend some Christmas cheer our way, head over to Choco Fetch at explosion.com slash support. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, remember, yeah, fuck the candy canes, bitch, where you're making a mince. I put the cookies on the table. You've been taking it since. You think the tree is big? Take a look at my dick. Yeah.